Assalamu alaikum. All right, put, put your hand together for yourself, please. Put your hand together for yourself. All right, this is why you guys are here. A bunch of self-centered people that just applauded themselves. This is why we came down here, guys. We love ourselves. No, just kidding. That's just something so I can just warm up. Uh, as I said, uh, Amri said, I'm Marash from Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. Um, so I would like to talk about some topics that, you know, I believe they're, they're pretty vital. So um, we all came down here because we doubted God's absolute authority. And we are here, this is our last chance, as we all know, the final chance, the third chance, and after this, it's all over. So let's see what God says in the Quran uh, regarding the human race. Uh, after all, this is the, the, the roadmap to our salvation, the Quran. And by following it, you're guaranteed to attain salvation. So, um, so we all came here for the demonstration, right? Every single one of us chose to come down here for this demonstration. So what is this demonstration? What did we want to see? What do we want to see? That's a, real, that's a question. What, what do we want to see? Why did we come down here? You can throw the all down there. That's, 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 the, that's the ultimate goal, but what led us to come down here? What did we do? What? Indecisive? Not understanding God's omnipotence? Okay. Mashallah, thank you. So we came down here, as you guys all know, we doubted God's absolute authority. We wanted to see a demonstration. What led to this demonstration? We were all up there in God's perfect kingdom, and there was this creature who was given a, man, uh, uh, a lot of God-given powers. And when he claimed godhood, the human race, which were the fraction of God's creatures, okay, and, and the gens, the rebels, we said, hey, um, let's go down there and see a demonstration. Maybe this person that, that has a lot of power, maybe he can be another god beside God. And that entailed that when we were up there, there were no diseases in God's kingdom up there. It's such a thing. There was no body for cancer to exist or for you to lose your legs or, or to have any kind of like war or famine because none of those existed up there. Everyone was in, it was God's kingdom. It was perfect. So we said that we want to go out there because we want to see if Satan can implement the same thing. I mean, that's what we came down here to see, to see if he's going to be able to demonstrate and be competent enough to run a dominion without any problem, without diseases, okay? Um, and that's what we're here to see. Um, so now let's see what God says in the Quran. In chapter uh, 12, 103, now here we are. Here we are, the human race is here. Now let's see what God says. In chapter 12, 103, I said, excuse me, God, I'm saying the majority of people do not believe. The, uh, most people, no matter what you do, will not believe. So there goes 90% of people that came here to see this demonstration. Maybe more than 90%. Just it's an arbitrary number. Now in chapter 12, 106 says, The majority of believers destined for hell. The majority of those who believe in God do not do so without committing idol worship. So then here you have like the, the 10% uh, from this 10%, God's saying that the majority of those now are going to pollute their belief and fall into idol worship. So then just by uh, simple math, you see that only minute number of people, okay, are going to make it. And uh, so as submitters, we have to be realistic and we have to understand that uh, we cannot go on through wishful thinking. And this is by all means is not being uh, pessimistic or you know, uh, being Debbie Downers, but having a realistic point of view because this is what Satan has promised, okay? And we underestimated uh, Satan as, as, stupid he's, as stupid as Satan is. He's very good at what he does and duping the human race. He's been around since the time of Adam. There hasn't been a kind that he hasn't seen. None of you, none of us are unique in a sense. The human being is the human being is the human being, Okay? We're all programmed the same way. So this is what Satan says. In chapter 4, 118, God has condemned him, and he said, this is Satan saying, 
I will surely recruit a definite share of your worshipers. A definite share of your worshipers. So that's, we are his prime target. So now in chapter 21, 15, it says humans fail to make a firm stand. We tested Adam in the past, but he forgot. We found him indecisive. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to underline this word indecisive. This is what has caused us, caused our eviction from paradise. And we're here once for all to make that firm stand so that we can redeem ourselves. Um, so now take what I said earlier out of your pocket about um, God's omnipotence. We undermine God's omnipotence. We wanted to see this demonstration because we wanted to see if Satan can um, implement and, and be a God, or be another God beside God. I mean, that's the whole part of demonstration, right? And we've seen that he's failing at that miserably. Um, so we live in an era where there's a distinction going on between God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom. This is very important for us to understand and this is very important for us to know what's going on. There is this black and white, okay, obvious as daylight, Satan's kingdom versus God's kingdom. Now, God's kingdom is characterized by perfect health, perfect happiness, perfect peace of mind and security, guaranteed, right? All we got to do is, you know, decide that we're gonna, we want to worship God alone, you know, go through the admission tests that we need to go through. According to chapter 3, 186, um, there's an admission test. Once you make a claim that you're going to believe, that lip service, that's lip service. It has to be proven. Your true conviction has to come out. Chapter uh, 29, 2 says the test is mandatory. 3, 186 says after passing your admission test, the footnote says that after passing your admission test, the proven worshipers of God alone will enjoy a perfect life now and forever. Um, so Satan's kingdom is characterized by war, famine, disease, um, and all the, all the problems that you're seeing out in the world. So now the question is, right, this is a topic that has been convoluted over the years and has been promoted um, wrongly under the guise of submission, that perfect happiness is a state of mind, that you can have all sorts of problems, um, lingering problems, and um, it just matters about what's up here, how you deal with it. Now let me just stop myself and say that we've had people that had come to the message who had AIDS, who had people who came to the message that had hepatitis. We've had people that came, this gentleman sitting right here, I'm sure he wouldn't mind sharing, Mr. Ghaffari, that he lost his eyesight. But guess what, he's sitting here looking at me like a hawk and can't see. <laughs> And again, the people who did have, um, who the lab showed that they had HIV, they were cleared. They couldn't find a trace of it. Person who had hepatitis, they checked out his liver. And with the amount of virus load that he had, he was supposed to have a cirrhotic liver that was in bad shape, not a scratch, what on his liver. Um, so what am I saying here? I'm saying that even if you incur some sort of, um, some sort of a, uh, punishment as a consequence, even those are restorable once you come to the message. Because the theory goes like this. As far as God's concerned, time doesn't exist. Time is a yardstick only for us as human beings as a form of calculation because that's how we go on. We need, the, they need, we need the time, right? As far as God's concerned, whether me, before I receive the message or the day that I die, right, God already knows what's going to happen to me. So God knows that uh, Mr. Ghaffari is a good person, and he's going to receive the message. So he's not going to allow him to incur something permanent that's going to uh, affect the quality of his life, right? He protects them because he knows the future. And this is in chapter 57, 22. It says, a profound fact, anything that happens to you, anything that happens on earth or to you has already been recorded even before the creation. This is easy for God to do. So God already knows, Right? So he protects you. He gives you the security. So it's the era of distinction. There must be a difference between God's people and Satan's people. How can you be living a righteous life? How can you be doing your contact prayers? Drop all your businesses. Go to Friday prayer. Give 2.5% of your charity. Give it away every time you make money. How can you have the same 
life as a person who's drinking, gambling, committing adultery, uh, you know, charging usury, uh, being a tyrant on earth. Does that make sense? The, God's system is very logical. And there must be a distinction between the two. And I'm not saying this is not my personal opinion. Um, so in chapter 45, 21, it says, Do those who work evil expect that we will treat them in the same manner as those who believe and lead a righteous life? Can their life and their death be the same? Wrong indeed is their judgment. So this is God teaching us that there is a distinction going on. And this has to do directly with God's omnipotence. A lot of people say, well, you know what, perfect happiness, it's been talked about. You know, you can be happy and you can be in this horrible condition and, you know, and go on and so on and so forth. So let me just stop myself right here and tell you that your quality of life is a direct reflection of your submission to God alone. It's a great gauge to use your life, your quality of your life, to gauge your submission, okay? Because there's a direct correlation. And as submitters, it is God's promise. What does God say in chapter 24, 55? Kings and queens on earth. God will replace worries and fear and will substitute it with peace and prosperity. That's God's promise. Now, as we advance in our submission, okay, and I was talking to this with a few lovely submitters yesterday, it is God's prescription. God's prescription doesn't matter who you are, if you're a black and white, Middle Eastern, Asian, doesn't matter. This prescription that's prescribed works on everybody who takes heed to it. All you got to do is apply it. God's law doesn't recognize colors. God's law doesn't recognize height. It's a law that's in, uh, that you apply, you'll see the results. You don't, you won't see the result. Just as gravity, jump up, you'll come down, do it 100 times, same thing will happen. It's not going to change. It's the law. It's absolute. So, we need to be conscious of this fact that when we say, la ilaha illallah, there is no other God beside God. The proclamation of our faith. That means that God alone is the only one that can provide you with health, wealth, happiness, security, and your provisions. No one else can control that. No one else can control that. And without knowing this quality of God, your belief is nullified. Because according to chapter 817, in order to understand and believe who God is, you have to know, in order to believe in God, you need, in order to believe in God, you need to know who God is. One of which is that he's doing everything. Ladies and gentlemen, only an omnipotent God is able to run everything. And that's an absolute law. So, when you say, when this statement, I want you to always break it down um, when you hear this kind of thing that, this is something that we should all rejoice in. It's not a matter of you judging other people and saying that, hey, if you don't have this, X, Y, and Z. This is for you to say, thank you, Lord, that if I leave a righteous life, you have guaranteed to me that I will have perfect security, perfect peace of mind, perfect happiness, right? Because you see Christians out there. Oh, Lord, and, you know, they praise and glorify Jesus, and, you know, they think they're happy. And boy, oh, boy, I mean, you come and see these people's lives. I mean, it's, it's bad. And they wonder, oh, you know, you got to suffer. This is how it is. This is how it is. got to suffer. This is how, you know, Jesus died for our sins. you got to suffer. And, you know, you guys, I'm sure you guys have whole, the, the whole shenanigans. You guys have heard it. But just understand that when we say, la, 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 there is no other God beside God. It's more than what we're saying. That encompasses a whole lot, lot of other stuff. The same thing when we say worship God alone, uphold the Quran alone. Let that not be a slogan. Okay, you got to believe everything that God says. When God says that absolutely God's allies have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve, and then it gives you in the next verse, in 1062, this was what I quoted, in 1063 says, who are these people? There are those who believe and lead a righteous life. God's people will be protected by God. 
And Satan cannot harm God's people. This is an absolute law. To say otherwise, it means that God is not competent to protect his servants. If you go other way around, and that's what it really boils down to, you dissect. What does it mean that if you're, so here is to, to um, how am I doing on timing? To, to conclude, it's a Quranic law. Bad thing does not happen to good people, okay? And a prime example of that is Rabbi Kushner of Boston that wrote a blasphemous book and is in the appendix. A messenger talks about it, how he says that, you know, how God cannot protect his, he wants to, but he can't do it. I mean, his book is full of blasphemies. And then you wonder why, you know, Satan smited this guy. Here this guy was that he was preaching the word of God at the same time he was blaspheming against God by undermining God's omnipotence. So Satan smited him. His son ended up getting this, 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 um, What's the name of it? Progeria disease, which you rapidly age. Um, and he died. So, I mean, this is, this is a God system. So just know, characteristic of God's test, in order to prove it, we have to go, they're all restorable. You're not going to lose your kid to prove the strength of your faith. You're not going to lose a finger to prove the strength of your faith. All of God's tests are restorable. All of God's pinches are restorable. You'll get a headache. You'll lose a couple of dollars. Um, you know, whatever it is, is nothing that's going to change the quality of your life. So let us always understand and come to this concept that lip service does not count. So next time when we say la 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 la, there is no other God beside God, focus and let's, let's, let's focus on what that means. That means that God alone will protect you. And please read Psalms 91. People will fall to your left, fall to your right. Guess what? You won't even hit your foot against a stone. And this has been promised since the, since the time of David and before that. So this is a guarantee that we should all rejoice in. And we should be extremely, um, again, be happy that you know, God has blessed us. And this is mathematically backed up. Every single, every single thing is, is proven without uh, traces of doubt. So uh, thank you. All right, let's go through questions. Um, let's start with all. Ashen, thank you so much. It was very encouraging. But I have a question, and I would like you, with that enlightenment that you have answered to me. What is happening to the disbelievers or unbeliever members of your family? God is going to protect them because to have, to, for you to have a good life or not be worried or not be, uh, uh, be in pain or uh, uh, not be bothered. For example, if your children are not believers like Noah, to the end of the life of disbelievers, God did not let Noah be suffering for his disbeliever son or lot from he, his disbelieving wife. That protection goes along with the family of the believer to protect the believer. Is that God's promise too or what not? So, so to answer you, just to say that we live in a new era, okay? A new era, which is an era of distinction. So in this era, uh, I'm positive that the believing families are going to get believing kids. It's because, you know, now we have nuclear family. We have like two, three kids as opposed to back then where... You know, there were so many children, so many kids. Um, so to answer your question is that you will see that God, God handpicks the soul that are supposed to be assigned to your family. God will handpick, if you're a believing parents, God will assign believing souls, uh, souls to your family. Now, if you have happened, if it has happened that, um, for example, you have a spouse or whatnot that's, that's, not a, that's an unbeliever, um, God will manipulate the situation that that will not bother you. Okay, we have an example from God's Messenger of Covenant. It says in one of his audio that this lady, because of her, this is what uh, Dr. Khalif was saying, that because of you, okay, your parents, which are older, they're not going to be a burden for you. So even because of God's mercy, out of God's mercy for the believer, he's not going to let the parents, okay, to come up with all sorts of problems 
that would then affect the happiness of, of, of the lady. So it's always proportional. Let's, let's remember that God handpicks the families. Uh, in this new era, things are a lot different than how things uh, used to be.